Hey, what's up everyone? Before we get started with today's video, I just wanna let you all know that there's a big, important election coming up and I urge you all to... Wait, what's that? It already happened? Well, who won? The pumpkin or the scarecrow? Hey everyone, we're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro 11, the 11 tiest Cubase ever released. I'm uh, enjoying it, it's fine, it's a lot like the last one. What we're going to do today is, I'm just working on this little composition, I'm gonna show you some custom patches in Retrolog and in Padshop, two of the best synthesizers included with Cubase. So let's listen to the source material for just a quick second, just so you hear what we're dealing with. I'm gonna show you this Retrolog, this is the base patch. And pad shop. You get the idea. Pad shop is the ARP and retro log is the bass. Although I use the ARP, I just play it by hand, so it's a And uh, Retrolog, I actually use the arpeggiator within it, Retrolog, to get the bass, so it's. And for both of these patches, I started with the initial patch. Now the third is a native instruments thing, it's Razor, I used a preset, no big deal. So let's go back to the beginning, and um, this is what we're looking for with our Retrolog patch. Let's get into making it. So I'll open up a fresh Retrolog, this is Retrolog 2, and I have the init patch. Uh, go in and you'll hear it's just a really So uh, a little bit harsh so the first thing I'll do is it's a three voice Synthesizer with a sub so I'll change this first voice to sine wave and we have More of a bassy quality to it now That's not going to be good enough because you heard in the patch that there's a little bit of grit to it So I want to add a second oscillator and for that, I'll add a square wave. Now, if we turn this off, we'll hear what the square wave sounds like. Okay, but what we wanna do is increase the number, uh, the shape of the square wave to around, I don't know, let's say three and a half. That's starting to sound a little beefy. Uh, we'll add the sine wave into it, and this is what we get. Well, I think the square wave is dominating there, so we'll pull down the volume of oscillator two, which is the square wave, to let's just go ahead and say, I don't know, uh, right there. And that's starting to sound an awful lot like the patch that we hear in the final recording. Now we need to do a few things with the filter. There's a bunch of filter shapes. I just chose the default one, which is a low pass filter 24. I pulled back the cutoff to around, I don't know, 5,000 Hertz or so. Uh, then I bumped up the resonance here, and I pulled back the envelope a bit. I used tube distortion, and I added, I don't know, that. Starting to sound mega cool. Now, in order to get the envelopes where I wanted to, I need less sustain, because I want that bass to sort of cut off. Okay, and then the amp envelope, what am I gonna do with that? I'll just leave it where it's at. So we have a sound that I like, but what I really need to do is ARP it out. So I'll go to the arpeggiator function on Retrolog. So what I have is just an eighth note playing continuously. So we'll open up the arpeggiator. We get to the arpeggiator by clicking here and opening it up. We have the eighth note, but the tempo scale is 16, so it'll be, that's too much for me. So I'll go to the 1 8th, and we're getting very close to our patch. Well, I need the gate scale to come down a bit because I want it to, now we're getting real close. I want the swing to just max out. I just want, I mean, I don't know if that does anything, but. And there you have it. We've made a base patch in Cubase with Retrolog 2. Now this type of thing is great for, uh, you know, old school synth style music. And 
And the gait scale is a real, it's a big uh, determinant of, you know, when the note cuts off when you're using the arpeggiator. So I think that's a good thing to, kn to know. So that's just how I made this bass patch in Retrolog 2. So now we need to move on to the patch that I made in Pad Shop. Let's uh, just go ahead and solo it. Okay, and I can play it here. We'll listen to it. It's like an A minor, minor arpeggio. It's not the you know the greatest playing in the world, um, but it sounds really cool and ethereal and trippy. So let's build out that patch. So this is the initial patch of Pad Shop when you open it. Let me move it so you can see it. Okay, it sounds cool. But what I want to do is not use the granular synthesizer, use this spectral oscillator. And this is just a sine wave as well. I love sine waves. There's no distortion in them. Okay, that sounds fine, but we need to pull stuff back. I think you heard that there's a little space equality to it. I'll show you how to get that. Uh, I want to change a few things. Let's uh, just change the position where it starts. Uh, if you can nail it right, uh, it'll start not at the top or the bottom of the sine wave. Now we want to offset it a little bit, just to, uh, let's do 13%. All of a sudden it sounds way different. Here's zero, here's 13, 14, whatever. Uh, it's a little bit more round of a sound. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, when you do synth patches on your own, a lot of times you're just messing around with the keys. So the key follow at 30, I found that that really uh, worked for me. And then we want a random direction that allows a little pan right and left. So I'll just bump that up a little bit to about maybe 14% or so. And the next thing I'll do is in harmonicity. I don't really know what that means, but I know that it sounds cool, so rounds things out. Now, this isn't supposed to be a bass patch. It's supposed to be an arp patch, so we want to cut some of the low. So I'll just cut it up to 25% or so. And then we want to add the number of spectral oscillators to a number less than two, but... Sounds good. We want to detune it a little bit. So the 0.3 on the number gets detuned and we get a little bit of a cool spacey effect. We'll detune it about around 30% or so. We'll add a little bit of gain. That sounds fine. Cool, cool. We'll pull back on our cutoff. Add a little bit of clip distortion. And now we need to mess with our filters. I want a little bit more attack so it's not as hard of a dung, dung, dung. So we'll add a little bit of attack to the filter. We'll bring down the decay. Uh, sustain can stay where it is. And then we want to add a little of attack on the amp side to have that wong. So, so if I make it long, but we'll have it shorter. So it's less of a bung bung and more of a, uh, we'll pull down the decay, pull down the sustain, and uh, and that's sounding cool. It's getting a little spacey effect from our random direction uh, nominator. Our filters have uh, mellowed it out a bit. Now the last thing we need to do, I think, is pull down the volume. A lot of times I like to mix from the mix window, so just pull down the volume on the plugin as a whole. But if you can hear, there's a little bit of clipping, more than just the clipping distortion itself. So I'll just pull it down from the instrument. And we have... And 
And these are in eighth notes too. So if you wanted to arpeggiate something like this, obviously I changed the arpeggiation, but you could do a uh, bum, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, you could have six and, you know, go three, seven, 12, boom, 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 boom. Zero, three. And then you just have to play a single note. Oh, that's a 16, so let's make it an eighth. And if you want this to go up in the scale, this could be 15. And we'll just do five. Or if we want this to be uh, the fifth, we have to add four. That'd be 19. So let's listen to it. Except for I didn't use the ARP on this one. I just played it in because I wanted it to be a little bit dynamic. And with those patches created, we have a final effect for our uh, composition, which sounds a bit like this. And there you have it. That's just creating two patches from scratch in Retrolog and Patch Up, two of the best synthesizers included with Cubase Pro 11. And my word of advice is just tweak the knobs until you find something you like. And the more you learn each synthesizer, let's say the arpeggiator module or what the filters do or what each specific knob does. For instance, I couldn't explain to you what inharmonicity is doing, but I knew that cranking it made the pad shop patch sound cooler. So a lot of times you're just fiddling with knobs and a lot of people don't like to admit that. They like to pretend like they have an encyclopedic knowledge of how every single knob on their synthesizer affects the tone, but I don't really believe that anyone believes that in their heart. I believe that a lot of it is just trial and error, finding the best sounds for you, and crafting the best tones that work for your composition. So this has just been a quick tutorial in Pad Shop and Retrolog to show you how to create your own patches if you want to make some cool music. I hope you can use it. I hope you found it useful. And if you have, please feel free to like or subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.